It's exactly 45 minutes past the hour of seven and quite here in our studios. It is pretty cold, but the conversation does continue on Sunrise at Sea and you are just in time for the Twitter jabs. Now, on Sunday, the 20th of March 2022, the Fountain of Honor did take to his Twitter account, and that is His Excellency Yorika Guta Museveni. And he announced and said, countrymen and countrywomen, it is with lots of sadness that I announce the death of the right honorable Jacob Olanya, the Speaker of the 10th Parliament. I got this information on this sad news at about 10.30 East African time from the people that have been with him and the doctor that was caring for him in intensive care unit. Well, he was, is, he was in indeed good hands and I delayed the announcement so that his children and family would be informed first. For very many people all over the country and even in the world, this information definitely did leave a bitter test in our mouths. And up to now, the country still mourns for the Speaker of Parliament, that is the late Right Honorable Speaker of Parliament, uh, Mr. Jacob Bolani. Of course, he has served, he remains the Speaker of Uganda that has served for the shortest time ever since he took up that position. And of course, we continue the conversation on the Twitter jabs as we look at how best people actually remember him or the kind of man that he was of course as we keep you updated in regard to the burial arrangements as programming continues later on well joining me at the center of this conversation today as we look into the lifeline of the fallen speaker of parliament is none other than honorable Evelyn Chemtai and she is the NRM woman MP Buko district since 2016 well also Evelyn Chemtai was born on the 12th of the October, she was also, well, she also looking at the background that she had, she was an accounts assistant for Wilcon Enterprises, that is Soroti, from the period of 2001 to 2002. Well, she also became the project accountant for Africa Leadership Institute from the period of 2004 up until 2011. Well, she was also the account stroke records assistant for the aid support organization, that is Taso Uganda, from 2012 to 2015. She became a member of Parliament of Uganda from 2016 up until date and under the 10th Parliament she was a member of the Committee on Agriculture, Animal Industry and Fisheries. Well under the 11th Parliament where the late speaker did serve she was under the Committee of Presidential Affairs and the Public Accounts Committee. Good morning Honorable and thank you so much for joining us this morning. Good morning how are you? I'm fine thank you. Yeah. Well, today we are looking at the fact that we did lose a mentor. I mean, it's a very big blow to the country at large, and it's, it, 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 it's really hard. But as a fellow member of the NRM, how do you remember the late uh, Right Honorable Speaker, Jacob Olanya? Um, it's indeed sad, and uh, I must uh, inform the country, our fellow countrymen, that we are in a sober mood. We are mourning a great man. Uh, Horrible Olanya was this great leader. He was so God fearing. During the 10th parliament, he was a de our deputy speaker. Yes. So he used to work close, closely with the Honorable Kadaga, the right Honorable Kadaga. And uh, that was his second term in, as being in the deputy speaker. Yes. He, was, he was a deputy for 10 years. And during the 11th parliament, this one was now elevated into a full uh, speaker. But while um, while in his seat as a deputy speaker. He used to work a lot. And most of us have learned a lot of things in him. Personally, I've interacted, I interacted with him very closely. We went to Israel for prayers uh, in 2018 and 2019. We would go there for two weeks of prayer. So you can see that um, the late Honorable Jacob Olanya was God-fearing. He was this straight man. When you go to his office, in case you need something, um, he would really guide you. Uh, there was time I went there and I, I wanted to, to present, to bring in some issues of uh, national importance. Uh, the people of uh, Uganda Wildlife Authority had killed my, some two voters of mine. And so I was so bitter, I'm like, no, 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 this thing I must bring to the floor of parliament. So when I went to the speaker, drafted, uh, small report and told him, sir, I'm going to present in the, in the floor of parliament. Tell me, look here. Yes, sorry, you've lost your people. You're bringing in us 
an urgent matter. Actually, they call it a very urgent matter. What do you think is going to change? These people have died. They're already being buried. What's so urgent? You told me this is a policy matter. Or you need to, to write a, a, a statement to, to the prime minister or the minister concerned so that the things can be sorted out. And so most times he guided members. And uh, another thing is he used to be a timekeeper. If you know that he's on the schedule, two o'clock must be in the chambers. Whether he gets four people or five people, he starts. So most of us would, say, would see the time period if it is his, you have to have your lunch as early as possible, be there mm -hmm. before two. Mm -hmm. So that's, uh, those are some of the few things that we, uh, we knew about him. And uh, indeed, the country has lost a great man. So looking at the fact that you have mentioned that you two worked closely and looking at the fact that even in regard to the fact that you are an honourable member of parliament, I'm sure you did work closely and interact with him. In your capacity, what are some of those notable achievements that you would say the fallen speaker did uh, achieve? Uh, of course, he achieved so many things, only that in categories. There are those that, that we achieved as a nation yes. because of him staring, being in the staring of parliament, there are so many bills that were passed. There, there are things that we achieved as, as, uh, as like members of parliament. We we'll take him to our constituencies to support the local activities and projects. He was supposed to come and, uh, and, 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 and uh, uh, be, be, become a guest of honor in one of uh, my fundraising drive. And then that time COVID came in, but we had arranged so many things to do together. But notably, He's one of the persons who drummed a lot for, for the NRM in the north. Remember, NRM was not so popular in the north, but he worked out. He pushed and told his people. I remember some of his statements because would follow him or speak with him. He says, you can only achieve, you can only deliver when you're in a government, not in the opposition. And of course, the background of... Uh, uh, the North has had a lot of insurgencies, there have been wars, so they needed a lot of recovery programs. And so he advised the team, advised the, the members of parliament, and advised the, the leadership of the North that let's embrace the sitting government so that we can recover from the uh, atrocities that we went through. Uh, we have uh, a project that is called NUSAF, the Great the North uh, NUSAF project, okay, that helps to. Uh, drum the activities or projects that helps uh, districts that are in the greater north that is the whole of uh, Achori sub-region, Teto uh, sub-region, Bugisu sub-region, Sabi sub-region. He has been one of the patrons who was guiding. Actually before he passed on we, we, we went to his office and shared with him about uh, uh, the NUSAF 4 the upcoming project and um, I remember we brainstormed about the success stories of NUSAP 3. Where did we go wrong? Where were the missing links? How do we patch them together? So that when we are going to the fourth project, that is NUSAP, NUSAP 4, we should make sure that we don't make the mistakes that uh, what was done in the past. We were five members who went to him, the steering committee of NUSAP, and he told us, I want you people to set priorities he says, set your targets. And he said, make the most, the, the best priority come first, mm -hmm. then others last, so that we can guide the NUSAF team, the technical team, what they should implement. So we were supposed to sit and discuss what we want. Do we want to see, do we want to see, see, see NUSAF maybe build bar halls? Or do we want to see NUSAF build schools? Do we want to see NUSAF do capacity building to the district officials? Or do we want to see NUSAF engage maybe in um, irrigation schemes or agricultural programs or give people um, startup funds for groups? So it was a, a, a target, I mean, a task that he gave us to sit and align those activities that we should make as priorities. And he said they should be activities that the impact can be felt by a common man, that man deep in the village should be something that leaves a mark. So that's the kind of man he was.
Okay, mm -hmm. so now let's let's just look at the fact that, of course, when this news uh, did come to attention, uh, especially for Ugandans at large, mm -hmm. very many people were in shock. It ruffled a few feathers. Some people did not take it lightly. Other people came up, you know, with so many theories. Mm -hmm. Of course, others kept on, of course, the very first time that the fallen speaker was flown off to Seattle, people were up in arms in regard to the money. However, in your regard, how do you think that the fallen speaker should be truly selected? Uh, of course, as you said, so many people uh, reacted differently in the, a natural African setting, especially Ugandans. Yes. They never believe anyone just dies. They must tag in something. Or maybe somebody posted. They can't believe somebody can have a, a natural, a death. natural death. Yeah, but uh, me as a Christian, I believe that there's time for everything and God has a plan. Mm -hmm. So maybe this was his time. And if it wasn't, God would have not allowed it. Mm -hmm. He would have definitely he, uh, healed him because we believe that a doctor's treat, but it's God who heals. So uh, what I want to, to believe and really advise my friends and others that it has happened the way it has. What we need to do is to accept and uh, see that the celebration, the celebration of his life is taken po positively. We plan well until the time that we lay him to rest mm. so that we don't have this pickering, so, so many, a lot of noise left and right. Okay. Yeah. So looking at the constitution, of course, I know this is a very sensitive issue. Of course, mm. you, you cannot even have parliamentary sittings or parliamentary uh, concessions without a speak of parliament. And even if there were to be a speak of parliament, so MPs would have to gather and, and elect. What are your feelings towards, I mean, we have barely buried the speaker. But we have MPs that have shown interest. You know, it has been alleged that many of them or a few of them have come forward to show their interest in this position. What is? What are your sentiments towards that? Is it too soon? Yeah, in a natural way, it's really too soon that some of us are even failing to take a decision. So, with the, in that regard, uh, it shows the lacuna. That there's some gap in our in our laws in the constitution. Remember that thing is, I think, is in the Article 82, part of one, I think Section 4, something in the, in the Constitution that says no business will be done without a speaker. Yes. And the law does not allow the deputy speaker to bury the speaker. Yes. So, and being the first time in the history of Uganda that a sitting speaker dies on chair. So it's just after his death, that's when it opened us, we opened the eyes of, of the legislation, like, oh, look here, this law has... Uh, uh, it has a problem because you cannot be having somebody mourning at the same time you're drumming for, for, for to be elected, you know? So it's just like somebody has died before buried, children are grumbling for their properties. That's the, the, the setting of a, a family. Yeah. And uh, the people will definitely say, mm -mm. it must be maybe like if I came in and say I want to become a speaker, they might say, Oh, so you're the one celebrating the death of that speaker? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that is how we we, we, we we we're having those issues. Okay. But still, we really pray that God gives us wisdom to handle. Because we can't yes. run away, that's the law. Yes. And we must elect a speaker in order to have uh, the, the speaker to preside over Absolutely. the matters of parliament. And uh, it must be the one to chair the, the, the when the body of the speaker has been brought to the chambers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Well, actually, in relation to that, that is actually subject to Article 80, 81, Clause 4, that says, of this constitution, no business shall be transacted in Parliament other mm -hmm. than an election to the office of the Speaker at any time that the office is vacant. So in your expertise, or the, in regard to just what you've said, so how do you think this matter should be handled? Definitely, we have to follow the law. We have to follow the law. If the constitution says there must be election, we shall have to do... To, to, to do elections. Actually, the whole of last night, last evening, we started seeing people bring in their interests. And um, the NRM party is already, today, has asked whoever is interested to come and pick up the nomination forms or register. And tomorrow, I think, SEC is sitting. Then on Thursday, we are going to have uh, a caucus, mm -hmm. uh, which will be, of course, definitely chaired by the, the chairperson, of, the chairman of the party, and that is the excellent the president. So I think that's where things will, will go on. That's where we shall decide. 
who will okay. become the flag bearer. So I'll ask for the people. Mm. I've been seeing some of the commenters were having this conversation live mm. this morning. And someone is asking all the way from Nakawa, and I would want to know, is there, in regard to still the meeting that you're supposed to have and the person that is supposed to be endorsed, in your, in your regard, mm. is there a heads up or someone that you think that might actually be endorsed as the Speaker of Parliament? Uh, I, I, or is it too soon to tell? I can't tell because I've seen everybody who has come up. I even don't know whether it's true or, you know, no social media. I may love you as a woman. I'm like, a, a woman, like, oh, I think you can become a deputy speaker or a speaker and I post. <laughs> yes. So uh -huh. there's been so many postings. Mm -hmm. We shall only know after these people have expressed interest. Yes. Because you must write and present it to the to NRM uh, headquarters. Okay. That's when we shall know this one is interested. But for now, I don't know. Because no one has as asked me as an individual. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we are still just there looking at everybody expressing interest. Okay, so any last remarks as we close up this conversation? Yeah, it is still a very sad uh, week for, for the nation. And uh, we're praying for the family, praying even for the 11th parliament, uh, for them to transact business or to come into terms with this. It's not easy. It will only take uh, the grace of God. And we are praying that um, all this process, God should take charge. We also pray for the president because I know uh, the late speaker was a very close friend to the president. And I know the president must be feeling uh, a loss of a great young man who, who was uh, staring uh, the greater north and, 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 and advising people what should be done, the right things, and him being a lawyer, you know. So uh, let's stay calm and accept that death is natural. And whatever the circumstances, we go through this morning season. And for my fellow colleagues, members of parliament, let's stand firm and elect a speaker whom we know that can stay that, can steer that house, can do what Honorable Olanya would have done. Yes. And we make sure that we deliver for our people. Because all the cooking for this country is done at parliament. Yes. So whatever decision we take, we take it on behalf of the whole nation yes. and we believe that whatever we speak, whatever action we take, we are impacting a million people, so many people. So my honorable colleagues, we need to sober up. Let's not uh, do elections um, based on emotions, but we need to come, come down and elect the right speaker and the right deputy speaker. And we pray that God gives us the grace and knowledge to have the right person in that 11th parliament. Okay, well, thank you so much, Honorable Evelyn Chemtai, for taking time off your busy schedule to come here to give us an insight as to what you thought of the fallen uh, Speaker of Parliament. Yeah. And we hope, like you have said, that God will give you the grace together with your colleagues yeah. that you're able to choose the right person to put into, into that position. Because at the end of the day, whatever decision you make will either affect the country positively uh -huh. or negatively. We have yeah. put all our faith in you, but thank you so much. Thank you, Tuoma. Thank you for hosting me. You're welcome. Okay. Well, that winds, that winds up the conversation that we had for you this morning on the Twitter jobs. Of course, again, our sincere condolences to the family, friends, and loved ones of the late right Honorable Speaker of Parliament. That was the 11th Parliament, Mr. Jacob Olanya. At the end of the day, God gives and God takes away. It is a very sad and traumatizing moment, but I call upon the country at large to come together. Let us mourn and support one another during this uh, trying period. But also let us trust that the MPs that are going to announce or even elect the new Speaker of the Parliament, that God shall give them the grace because at the end of the day, these are issues of national interest and whatever they decide directly and indirectly affects us. And that winds up what we had for you this morning on the Twitter job. Stay tuned because up next we take a look at our views and this morning we discuss social responsibility. Should bystanders get involved in issues when something is happening? Very tricky situation, but stay tuned and keep watching Sunrise at Sea.